how many kids are we talking about? This was uh, five students. Five students, and, and what age? We had one ninth grader, two 10th graders, and then two grade 11s. Okay. My cousin had arranged a, a, a visit to, as I mentioned before, First Build, which is that, that incubator and the Uni University of Louisville um, Manufacturing Center. And this, I didn't know this, but it's one of the uh, premier additive manufacturing, 3D printing essentially, uh, centers in the country. And there we have the head of the center, who my cousin just happened to run into when he was walking by, who gave us a personal tour of uh, both facilities. And that was, that was our morning. The, the following day was actually great that the uh, the opening ceremonies to the VEX tournament, we had the governor of governor of Kentucky speaking and talking about this amazing place at the University of Louisville, where manufacturing is being done that that isn't being done other places in the world. And he said, if you haven't if if you haven't heard of it, or if you have any time over the next few days, make sure you visit this place. And we all felt that so excited because it's like, oh, we've already been we there. We just did, right? Yeah, yeah, we know it. You know, we can make it make it happen. He's right. You should. Yeah, yeah. We had we had planned on going down to the competition. This is when one of the students started feeling sick, and we were getting pretty nervous because you know, we we needed to get going. We were supposed to register for the tournament, uh, go down and check out what it was going to look like, uh, but we had a student getting getting sick. My cousin came over and and spent time with with uh, the student as he was. Uh, sleeping and, and trying to recover, getting better. That made it possible for us to go down and, and check out the competition and sort of see what it was all about. And then well, we, you guys we must be jet lagged too. <laughs> we right? were jet lagged too. Yep, we were exhausted. It takes me a good week usually yep. every time yep. I go back to the state. And we knew that we were not going to get past jet lag. We knew that. So there right. wasn't. We were only there the for a few thing, days. You know, I mean, and I don't 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 get me wrong. I don't mean to diminish the significance of what you guys were doing, but normally speaking. When you're dealing with like engineering and robotics projects, jet lag is not something you want to have to uh, That's right. concern yourself with. That's right. I knew that there were lots of elements of this that I could not really plan for, that uh, I, I knew we were going to have some adventures. And that's part, part of the modeling process as a teacher. Like I wanted students to see that if things happen, it's OK. Yeah. You, you plan ahead as best as you can. You uh, make arrangements. and so. There, the, the issue that we ran into it was, was that we were disconnected from the internet at the convention center. The only way that I could call a cab, imagine this, was going to the security place and saying, can you use the landline phone to call a company that maybe you know? And the woman actually looked, looked up the company off of a piece of paper. This was not at all an electronic transaction. This was all... <laughs> Uh, as if we were time, in a time warp back to before smartphones and everything. And it took us about an hour uh, to get back. Just to get back. Just to get back. Um, and so my cousin, who is, was incredibly patient, but understandably a little annoyed that he had to just He's sit there, there with the He was sitting student. there, the student sitting outside. You know, he has a, a two-year-old, uh, two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, and so he was keeping his distance. So I got back. His phone had gone dead, so even if I had tried to call him, it wouldn't have worked. So it was this great moment where we get... I yeah. love how technology is yep. failing you at every Absolutely. turn. Absolutely. At a robotics turn. Yeah. Fast forward to the morning. I, of course, wanted to see how the student was doing. I went out. The student was awake, looking at videos on YouTube. Said, oh, hey, Mr. Weinberg, how's it going? And, and proceeded to go and uh, start the coffee maker. And I said, stop. This stop. You've been sick for at, at least 18 hours. The yeah. first thing that you're going to start start your day off is not a cup of coffee. Right. Let's slow down. Right. Let me tell. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah. Also, get away from all the dishes. Right. Right. Yeah. Don't just don't touch uh, the coffee. <laughs> we got into our Uber with our robot. Br gets a lot of attention from the driver. Actually, I think every single one asked lots of questions. Um, went to the convention center and saw. Uh, just again, row after row of teams with competitive robots, and I'm realizing, wow, this, like, this is a really special place 
for this group of students to be because they can see these are the students that you don't necessarily see a lot of in a, in a school of a thousand uh, um, or a high school of, of just over 300. The, the group of students who would get really excited about this uh, is not necessarily the most visible component of any, uh, of any uh, community. And yet here you have the students who are those interested uh, students in robotics and engineering all in one place. And so this, this nerd power mecca, uh, the students were there. And it was shortly after I realized, like, this is a really special place, this is a really special opportunity for, for these students to experience this. Uh, I, was, I, I just said, this is so stereotypically nerdy. And then a student said, Mr. Weinberg, uh, my nose is bleeding. <laughs> and, and it was like this, this perfect moment where I said, this, this is perfect. This is, this is an amazing opportunity yeah. that I can't even believe for a moment I was thinking might not be worth the effort and, and all the time it went into planning it.